I remember a tough season in my church. When I was just washed out, we had upwards to 200 people leaving us in that split, and I was so discouraged. And there was just a hyper-criticism in the church. You ever been in a church when that happened? Just hyper-criticism. Everything, I couldn't breathe without somebody dissecting it and saying I did something wrong about it. I'd have counseling appointments, and people would sit down and say, Pastor, five years ago you did this. I couldn't remember what they were talking about. Something I said in the hallway of the church, just hyper-criticism. And it just drained me. I mean, I was completely drained of my energies. And... Uh, to make a long story short about what God was doing in all of that, I, I have worked super, super hard to develop a, a strong small group ministry in our church. Actually, 87% of our worship attendance attends a small group regularly. That's pretty much unheard of, but we've worked at it hard for 40 years. We have a personalized strategic world missions ministry that God's used in a great way. And just all these things that I developed, and God, and here's what God was doing. He said, you know what? You, you, you're preaching. You're preaching expositionally, but in your heart, you're trusting some of the system and not me using my word. So I'm going to bring you to the point where you're so broken, so discouraged, and so weak, you're going to have energy to do one thing, preach. And Brother Richard, it, I, it was probably a two-year period. All The all, only thing I had energy for was to study and get up preach. I had to let everything else go. And that's where God proved to me the priority of preaching. The other things are good. He's given those things back now that he's gotten my heart right. But it took that season of depression. So I lashed myself. I said to myself, okay, what am I going to do? I told, I told the pastor about this little story. It was one Wednesday night, and I was just an emotional wreck. I was just at the end of myself. So I called my friend Jay Adams, the, new, the king of Nuthetic Counseling. <laughs> And I thought, Jay will talk to me on the phone. He'll pat me on the back. He'll spend some time with me. He'll be loving and encouraging. <laughs> I called Jay Adams. And I said, Dr. Adams, I said, I I'm just wrecked. We've had about 200 people leave us. There's hypercriticism. I'm just, my energy's gone. I can't go on. I don't know what to do. It's Wednesday night. I can't go out there. He said, what God call you to do? <laughs> I said, Preach. He said, you study the word of God and you go out there and you preach stronger than you've ever preached before. The people that are left need you now more than ever. It's like, oh, I feel better. <laughs> I was just like, oh my. And I did, brother. I preached like a house on fire on Wednesday night. He knew he couldn't be there to pamper and pet and hug and all the stuff our flesh wants. He just spoke truth to me. He got me through. So sometimes pastor... You're going to have to say, I can't make those visits they want me to make. I can't show up everywhere they want me to show up. I can't count as much as they want. But this one thing I'll do, I'll preach the Word of God the best I can in the power of the Spirit. And I'll sink or swim on that. God knows what He's doing. And you have to persevere through those seasons of depression. 